G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. As the trade period gets a little bit closer, uh, I'm gonna start doing more and more trade updates to the point where right before the trade period and throughout, I'm pretty much gonna be doing this daily. So for a start, if you wanna see plenty of footy trade content, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, in today's video, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a snapshot at all the trade rumors that are happening right now, particularly the ones that have had an update in the last couple of days. Of course, I've done plenty of uh, trade content already. I've done like every clubs trade targets there's a little bit more of an update in some cases as well so we'll go through it and i think to start off with we can talk about a deal that is confirmed not to happen and that's uh mac andrew is staying at the gold coast suns i think this is a pretty big story because it's reportedly made him the richest player in the AFL, well, in terms of his contract. It's a five-year contract extension, and he will remain with the club until the end of 2030. He's the longest contracted Gold Coast son. From what I can tell by Callum Toomey, it's a five-year uh, contract until 2030, but there is a trigger for four extra seasons. So that is huge. That's a potentially nine-year contract, and uh, uh, that trigger probably falls around the time he becomes a free agent. So that's really worked in his favor if he decides he wants to leave close to when he hits free agency, which is technically eight years in the system, and I think it'll be nine for him. It still gives him the flexibility to move on, I believe, depending on how the contracts are structured, which we don't get access to. But this is a huge deal for the Gold Coast Suns. First of all, it's, it's surprising in itself that Mac Andrew is now or will become the best paid player in the AFL. He's had a fantastic season, don't get me wrong. Um, and it was an important play for them to keep because there was interest from Hawthorne in particular um, as potentially going for him next year when he's out of contract. They also have uh, pretty much signed Alex Davies. I believe he's verbally recommitted to the Gold Coast Suns. This one was interesting. It's not something that I covered heavily or has been covered heavily, but a fringe player who has a good talent that I think the Pies were looking at as a midfield option. It's an interesting one. Apparently Hardwick talked him into staying, even though the Gold Coast midfield depth uh, it might have him regretting that in the future when they're adding Lombard and they, they have Jake Rogers from last year's draft as well. There's an oversupply of talent, so Alex Davies is likely to stay at the Gold Coast Suns. We've got a couple of formal trade requests from Bailey Smith and Jack McRae. That's out of the Western Bulldogs. We did kind of know these were happening. There was a little bit of uh, interest around the Bailey Smith trade. Uh, Callum Toomey in particular suggests he thinks it could go potentially to a preseason draft threat. He thinks there's going to be a tough negotiation between those two clubs. There's also a little bit about Bailey posting something on Instagram, a post that he later deleted, and it said something along the lines of there's two sides to every story with a clown emoji. He's then deleted it. So I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how this plays out. At the moment, Geelong's first pick... Well, that'll be nominally like, let's say they win the flag or play in the grand final. That's pick 17 or 18. With academy picks and compensation picks, Josh Battle's likely to probably go uh, before that pick. We're, we're talking about a pick potentially as late as the early 20s. So I think Geelong's going to have to stop up multiple picks here if that wasn't already the case. And uh, I think this might be a tough negotiation. And Jack McRae, on the other hand, is an interesting one. I don't really know where he would go. I believe that he said like a month ago it came out he was keen to stay in Melbourne. And then you see a couple of clubs like Geelong and St Kilda linked. I feel like it could be one for North Melbourne to consider. It really depends how they go with some other players we're going to mention in this video. But, you know, probably fits the criteria of, of um, experienced veteran midfielder. Melbourne potentially has been linked uh, as a club that could use him. But if they're keeping Petrarca and Oliver and they've drafted Caleb Windsor and they're going to have another top five pick in this year's draft, I don't know if I see that, but it is possible. So long story short, don't know where Jack McRae is going. Bailey Smith is likely to get to Geelong. Also a little bit about Jake Stringer. That's emerged recently. A little while ago, there was a suggestion that Sydney might uh, go for him. I think that's pretty much been considered not likely at this point in time, but Jake Stringer had hit a trigger clause that uh, allowed him to stay on at the Essendon Footy Club for an extra year and about 400,000 has been reported. He's naturally looking for multiple years and apparently, according again to Cal Toomey, the suggestion is that he is telling people that he's played his last game for the Bombers. So I think we can probably expect Jake Stringer to find another club at this point. And again, just following what is being reported, Collingwood seem like a major suitor for him at the moment. They probably need some support in terms of goal scoring power. And as much as he gets criticized, he still kicked 42 goals this season. So we're not talking about a guy who has faded away into the abyss. I think he still has a bit to offer. And I think Collingwood would be a good fit, even though he's still not a true traditional key forward. But if McStay's back, Jake Stringer could be good in that forward line. Speaking of Collingwood, there was a John Noble story as well. So there's been a few competing stories around this. First of all, I believe he has requested a trade to the Gold Coast Suns. I don't think there's too much um, ambiguity about that. 
However, I think a story subsequently broke that Pick 12 was going to be involved or that, or that Collingwood had requested it as in exchange for John Noble, which I think the broader AFL fan community kind of laughed at. Sam Edmund also came out and said that is not true. However, I did uh, read a little bit about how there could be a shuffling of draft picks here for Collingwood. So it may not be a case of saying, give us pick 12 for, for John Noble. But Collingwood have a father-son next year's draft. I think it's Tom McGuan. There's probably going to be a first round at this point. Could they do what they did with Dacos and forecast it in a year's time? They probably don't need their first round pick. So could they swap their future first into this year's draft somehow to get Gold Coast pick 12 and perhaps later picks? Long story short, I don't know exactly how they're going to do it, but they could do that to get pick 12. John Noble gets to the Gold Coast Suns. Gold Coast moves some picks around like they need to for Leonardo Lombard. There was also a suggestion that if they get pick 12, this is Collingwood, they could throw their hat in the ring for Dan Houston. So there's a little bit of a merry-go-round here. I also saw for the first time a suggestion that Jaden Laverde could leave Essen at the end of this season. Geelong and Carlton were linked. Uh, I think if Nick Haynes goes there, I wonder if they would get both. This is Carlton I'm referring to here. If Carlton uh, linked to Nick Haynes, which has been a while since that's happened, would they go for Laverde? Possibly. The Cats, that probably also makes sense. He's not exactly young, but that's not really been a problem for Geelong. And there was also a suggestion that Essendon could replace Jaden Laverde with Josh Rotham from the West Coast Eagles. And as an Eagles fan, uh, enjoy. Speaking of the Eagles, there is a little bit of development around a couple of deals here. So with Tom Barris moving to Hawthorne, or at least that's where he's requested a trade to, um, I think the latest suggestion is West Coast want the two first round picks from Hawthorne, considering Hawthorne's improved ladder position both this year and potentially next year, if you're projecting the way they're going to be in the future. Two first round picks is, they're probably pretty late first round picks. So I believe the latest suggestion is the Eagles want to upgrade their own future second to Hawthorne's future first next year. I've covered this a little bit on my True Eagle Eagles channel, but at least we're starting to get a feel for how that deal might work out. Um, at the moment, we're all just speculating, but that is being discussed in media circles. Liam Baker as well. I did see a little bit about this. And again, I made a whole video about this on True Eagle, but there was a suggestion that West Coast would be willing to part ways with pick three to get Liam Baker done as long as it came back with the top 10 pick. So to clarify, Richmond only have pick one in the top 10 currently. But they're likely to do deals for Daniel Rioli and they're likely to do a deal for Shea Bolton as well, which means they could end up with pick six and nine potentially. So we could see potentially reportedly, and I don't know how much of this John, it's John Ralph wishful thinking, could it be pick three for Liam Baker and pick nine. I, I think I'm torn as to the merits of that. I can understand why West Coast would do it because it allows them to keep another pick in the top 25. And they may feel that the top 10 prospects in this draft to even. That's not quite how I feel as an Eagles fan, but I don't know if this is entirely fake news. That being said, we still don't know if Liam Baker is going to request a trade to the West Coast Eagles. He may end up picking Fremantle. It seems unlikely he would stay, but I suppose you can't rule anything out. And it appears like North Melbourne might actually cash in on a couple of veterans this year. I say cash in quite loosely. It may involve like some reasonably sized contracts, but we're talking about players to add some depth, add some experience to their midfield and forward line. So specifically Luke Parker and Jack Darling. So I'm not sure if Luke Parker is definitely going to leave Sydney. It was reported a little while back that he would be entertaining a move to Victoria potentially to continue his career given Sydney have, well, they have a lot of midfield depth all of a sudden after last year's trade period. So there's a potential move there for Luke Parker and North Melbourne and the guys on Gettable were suggesting it is quite possible. I think that would be an awesome move for North Melbourne if they can pull that off because we know he's a great leader. We know that he's still a good player and he can add something and play in multiple roles for North Melbourne. Rest forward, play in the midfield. I do like that move for them. The Jack Darling one is a little bit harder to fathom. He is contracted for another year at the West Coast Eagles. So for them, I mean, I suppose he brings experience. He brings work rate. He's a very good trainer, etc. And they do need a partner for Nick Larkey. But I suppose, you know, I'm not really too sure where guys like Brian Teague will sit at this current point in time. I'm less convinced that North Melbourne need Jack Darling. However, they have offered a multi-year contract to him. There may be a negotiation here where West Coast may offer to pay some salary to make it a better pick exchange for West Coast. Because you'd think, you know, if North Melbourne absorbed the entire contract, this would be a pick trade of like pick 80. But if West Coast offer to, to front some of the salary for Jack Darling, maybe they can negotiate a better draft pick. 
We're in the early stages of this. It's probably still a 50-50 of it happening, but nonetheless, the, the interest from North Melbourne is real. It is legitimate. And finally, just some quick fire ones uh, to finish off this trade update. Uh, I did see a little bit of a tidbit around Dan Houston. So we talked about the potential suitors. First, it was Melbourne. Carlton is still a big contender. We've seen St. Kilda also have at least some interest in this situation, and the story's not going away. Uh, Port Adelaide is still playing in the finals as I currently record this, naturally. So we won't have an answer, but we could have an answer in a few days as to whether Dan Houston leaves it all. However, I did see the North Melbourne reportedly, take that with a grain of salt, reportedly had thrown their hat in the ring with a future first round selection. So again, they would hypothetically need to convince Dan Houston to come to North Melbourne over someone like a Carlton, which may be tough. But if you were Port Adelaide, you'd bloody hope, in my opinion, that uh, he chooses North Melbourne because that could be a potentially top three pick in the 2025 draft, you'd think. I did see that Harry Perriman has, well, he has about five or six clubs looking at him at the moment. However, West Coast has apparently entered the race. I saw that for the first time. I thought that was mildly interesting. Now, I believe it was the Herald Sun that reported it. They're into Peatling and Perryman. So that was the first time I'd seen the Eagles linked to trying to get Perryman. You'd think, you'd think, if, if Hawthorne are going for him, if I think it was a Port Adelaide that had some interest in him, a variety of other clubs, you'd think West Coast would sit pretty far back in the pecking order, but I did find that interesting. So... My fingers are crossed. And finally, a little bit on Jack Martin. He, we do know that he's had a medical at Fremantle. I don't think it's likely he's going to stay at Carlton. He's out of contract. I think he signed that five-year deal. So I think this is the end of that five-year contract he signed when he joined. I could be wrong. I think that's right. And it hasn't really worked out for him to the same extent as perhaps people expected. He looked like an absolute prodigy at the Gold Coast Suns. So long story short, a 29-year-old or 28-year-old Jack Martin is likely to either go to Fremantle or perhaps that he could make his way to Queensland. You'd think the Gold Coast Suns would be more likely than the Brisbane Lions, but again, I'm not entirely convinced. I don't really know where that sits. We have no indication as to which club he'd prefer, but I think he's you know, naturally got some connections to Queensland given he used to play there. Anyway, guys, that was my best attempt at wrapping all the trade news at the moment. Again, as these things continue to build momentum and, and as more teams get eliminated from the finals race, with some of these stories and a trade requests will become formal. So like I said, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up with it all. And for now, I'll thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.